a Fox News political analyst calls for a change in the Chicago Police Department and the way that it investigates homicides in Chicago. Let's talk about it. All right, don't forget to hit that like button, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. And these videos are used in accordance with Title 17, United States Code, Section 107, for fair use and criticism. Without further delay, let's go on ahead and get right into it. So a Fox News political analyst is calling for the Chicago police uh, to step up the way that they investigate crimes in memory of his brother who was lost. Uh, who lost his life to gun violence in Chicago. And this was a story that I definitely wanted to react to because some of the comments that he made in this story was something that those of us who had been not necessarily opponents of uh, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, but uh, opponents of this person being voted into office who's not going to give us the results that we are looking for. We've been saying this for the longest and now people are starting to, or just recently, they've been starting to wake up to the fact that, oh, I'm already getting into it. Let's just go on ahead and watch it. Here we go. You're going to be speaking today before a congressional committee. Tell yes. us about this about this, and how it all came about. You were instrumental in pushing this, right? Yes, I was. I reached out to Congressman Burgess Owens just last year. Um, I didn't feel the confidence that Kim Fox would properly handle this case, and I decided that I needed to get a bipartisan letter together and ask Congress, Democrats and Republicans, to sign on to say, hey, FBI, take a look at this, this murder investigation. What's going Now, here's the thing that I kind of want to add into this, that those of us who had been, those of us who had been saying that Kim Fox is not qualified to be Cook County State's Attorney by way of her actual record, right? Those of you, let me give you a little small recap, right? In the wake of the Laquan McDonald situation where uh, former Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke shot uh, Laquan McDonald, a black teenager, 16 times. And there was, uh, this was during the mayoral uh, election or re-election efforts of Rahm Emanuel. Gary McCarthy was Chicago police superintendent. Anita Alvarez uh, was the Cook County State's attorney at the time. And so right in the middle of the Chicago mayoral and automatic elections, uh, that matter wasn't uh, brought forth to the public. Well, after the elections and uh, with Will Calloway and a couple of other folks uh, made it possible that the uh, tape be released and then the subsequent pro uh, protest and all the other stuff that took place during Chicago and the police reform and a variety of different things. I'm saying all that to say this. Kim Fox ran for Cook County State's Attorney's Office to unseat Anita Alvarez and won on the back of the Laquan McDonald situation. Those of us who had worked with the state's attorney's office and those of us who knew of or either knew Kim Fox directly, we knew in fact that she was not going to be good for the black community because she was a juvenile state's attorney supervisor. That's what she was. She had no homicide experience in felony review or in actually sitting third, second, or first chair in homicide cases. This was a vote based on skin color and based on her being a female, having nothing to do with her effectiveness as a prosecutor, putting people behind bars who deserve to be there. And I have to say, like Malcolm X said during the uh, John F. Kennedy situation where he was told not to talk, but neither here nor there, the chickens have come home to roost. I'm going to double down and say that the chickens have come home to roost. This is literally what you get when you get someone who is not qualified and does not have the ability to be able to go after and advocate for the homicides that occur in our neighborhoods. These homicides occur in our neighborhoods and we are not getting the justice that we need to get. Now, granted, let me provide you a little bit of stuff. You know, state's attorney can't do everything. Police can't do anything, everything. We actually have to have families who value uh, law and order, an actual family, more than the police do, more than the prosecution do. But before we even continue to allow this gentleman to speak, I gotta, I, I gotta rant on that. I gotta rant on that. This is what our, our vote, I didn't vote for Kim, but this is what the vote, 
the voters of Cook County get when you get someone in office that you voted on, on feelings and, and ticket rhetoric in terms, instead of effectiveness, instead of effectiveness. Now, whether you like Anita Alvarez or not is another thing, but did she do her job as a prosecutor? Yes. She cut her teeth in the doggone mud. That's, all right, let's continue. I, I said what I said. What's going to be your message today when you have a chance to speak to them? We need help. When the elected officials fail us, what do you do? You got to go to the next body, and that's Congress. And unfortunately, this is the reality in which many Chicagoans face in the city. Just But the thing is that we put them there. Not me. I didn't vote. I didn't vote for them, right? The ones who I vote for, look, I vote because my vote is my voice, right? That's the only thing that I can do as a Chicagoan to sit here and stand up and do something. Because you can't go to the office, you get arrested. You can't, you see what I'm saying? So I use my voice effectively. Mayor Johnson that we have, I didn't vote for him. I voted for Paul Ballas. I got no problem saying that, right? Because I, I've been under Paul's stuff as a, a, a person who was in Chicago public schools, as a person who, you know, when he was talking about he was going to open up the schools and invite programs, I used to work for one of those programs. So I know he was going to do what he said he was going to do. But when we put people in this office based on party rhetoric instead of just actual effectiveness, and then we want to complain when we don't get what we want. White people have been trying to tell you all this time. Other people have been trying. I'm not saying go vote Republican, but what I'm saying is this. Outside of the party recommendation, they've been telling you these people are not going to work for you. But when they say it is racist, but when I say it, I'm cooning. We can't win. We can't win. And you're literally getting what happens when you put people in office who care more about party rhetoric than actually care about you, your safety, and your doggone family. Let's continue. Sign up in the comments. What do you think? Last year, we saw out of the 29% of African Americans that live in this city of 2.7 million, 80% of the people who were murdered last year were black. And this should be a state of emergency for the city of Chicago and for every community within this city. But it, but it's not going to be. You know why it's not going to be? Black death is a hustle. Black death is a hustle. Ask AR League. If you're watching this, no disrespect. I, you have a job to do. You've been serving the community all these years. I love it. I, but ask AR League, the, the brass tax bottom line, does he benefit? On the whole, for funeral services, look at the numbers. Not as financial stuff. I'm not talking about that. But look at the numbers. The bodies of those they have serviced and, and prepared with dignity and, and, and provided a wonderful funeral service for the family members. Which ones? Those who died of natural causes or illnesses or those who have died of homicides? Which ones? Black death is a hustle. And now you want the police. You spent all this doggone time talking about some F the police, F12, F this, Black Lives Matter. Don't get me wrong. There was a need for police reform and, and still is. You know, training, I've got my issues in that area too, right? But I'm just saying, you did all that shouting, all that shouting. And the police, my God, they paid the Black community back in the best way they could. Those who could leave, left. And those who are staying will watch you hurt yourself and then watch you cry and complain. And now it is crazy how many people are asking for more police. This is, this is, we saw it coming. We saw it coming. Oh, I can't wait. Please get rid of qualified immunity. Let's get rid of qualified immunity in Illinois. I urge the politicians to get rid of qualified immunity. And let me tell you why. If I got to go and get my own insurance, right, to sit here and take the, have the liability fall on me to say if I respond and this goes well or I do bad under the color of the law, the taxpayers don't have to foot the bill of my law enforcement actions. I got to foot the bill like any other thing that I have where I have professional liability insurance. You know what that means? I reserve the rights not to respond to your situation. Why? Because the liability is on me. I And the government can't tell me I have to do it. They can tell me that if I do it, this is what I must do. But they can't tell me that I have to do it. Why? They're not going to fit the bill if something goes wrong.
I have to fit that bill, which means I reserve the right to refuse service. Oh, you think your case is cold? Let's get rid of qualified immunity. Let's see how loud the cries will be of the community. When we can protect ourselves, but we won't, we absolutely will not. Let's continue. I'm sorry, sir. I'm ticking over your finger. Let's go. How much, uh, uh, this obviously your brother's case not solved, you having to go to the FBI and not getting any resolution with Chicago police. How, and, and I'm sure people who are watching who have loved ones who have yes. also been murdered. Yes. How much of a source of frustration is this for you? And what has it done to your life personally? Because I'm sure they can relate. Well, I'm going to be talking about that very specifically today. Um, when I first spoke to the detective on the case, it didn't seem as though my brother's murder was a priority for them. And I spoke to him two days after this happened. And he was telling me, hey, we got other cases in. We got other murders that have come in since then. And that was literally 48 hours ago that my brother was murdered at the time of that, that discussion. And I know there's a lot of other folks who have this same conversation with police officers. I was just talking to a friend of mine this last night who's had two brothers murdered, innocent brothers murdered within a year or two apart from each other. And she was saying the exact same thing. The police officers they were speaking to said, hey, we got other cases that have come in. We know that there's a strain on the police force here in the city of Chicago. That's what I was going to They need 2,000 new detectives to handle the, 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 the workload. And I'm sure police are becoming numb to what's going on in the city of Chicago because it happens so often. I'm sure that they are feeling a way about the county prosecutor not doing her job. You know, you, you, you have to treat these people with dignity and respect. I know that there's been issues within the Chicago Police Department. We can talk about Laquan McDonald. We can talk about John Burge. You can give any number of examples, but at the same time, these are people who are sworn to protect us. So we have to work with them. Even though they may not do everything right, you got to hold them accountable, but boy, certainly we need to work with these people to ensure that there's justice for our families throughout the city of Chicago. It's not that they don't care. It's just that they are overwhelmed. Yeah, and there's some who actually don't care. So we know that that's, that's the truth, too. So those folks who may not care, maybe they're overwhelmed, maybe they feel like they can't do the job anymore, they should retire. Go to another police force where things are... Here's the thing for me. How do you want someone to care more about your family than we as the community actually caring about the community? And we look at this crime. We report on it all the time. I talk about it as much as I can. Now, we talk about African problems. It takes a village to raise a child. Who, oh my God, who doesn't overuse that? But a child not embraced by the village will burn it to feel its warmth. Burn it to feel its warmth. What about that? That's why these crimes are happening. The children not being embraced by the village, burning it to feel its warmth. I gotta say, I gotta, I gotta say, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on this? It, I, I kind of ran out of breath on this. I hope that this gentleman is able to get uh, some justice for his brother because his brother doesn't deserve it. But come on, man. We, we've got to do better. You want the politicians that you put in office to do the job. You thought they're going to go out there and police? You thought they're going to go out there and respond to crime? You want the police to now do their job? You or you want, oh, let me guess, you want them to care more about our community than we care about our community? What say you? Sign off in the comments. This is Instructor Mike. See you on the next React video.